this is the best place to drown your sorrows, you know? 3,000 Hoovians and lots and lots of booze. Ah, the American fans. They are the diehards. Uh, Balls to the wall kind of attitude. All through medical school, I was still kind of the, the closet Hoovian. They have, we're just a normal couple. We just got married two years ago. As I was writing that doctor, I was pouring myself into that character. I was pouring my experience of the doctor as a child and all the wit and all the warmth and all that sort of love that the doctor has of humans. I was pouring into this character and I was loving doing it. I was putting myself on the line there. Someone wrote to me and said, you've got it the wrong way around. Yeah. yeah. I didn't. Pedants. Don't even just love them. My doctor, the eighth doctor, has been mainly on audio all these years. Right. So I played a doctor on the radio. And you've been alive for, as a doctor, you've been alive for longer than any other doctor. The longest and the shortest. Yeah. It's become it. Hey there. Hey, I'm back. Oh, this is hard to find. And look at that. No sex, please. He's British. No sex, please. He's Matthew Jacobs. Yes, OK. The nature of obsessive zealot fandom is something I'm interested in. Yeah, because there are people that that's what they do yeah. all year round. Exactly. Every day. And we're cogs in that wheel. Yeah. Hey everybody, welcome to Cherry the Geek TV. I'm Joe Venorni. We are here at the 18th annual Omaha Film Festival where we have just screened a, a fascinating new documentary called Doctor Who Am I? Uh, and we have the two co-directors of Doctor Who Am I uh, with us today, Vanessa Yule and Matthew Jacobs. Uh, Vanessa, Matthew, welcome to Cherry the Geek TV. Hello, hello. Uh, the, the movie's about, uh, tangent tangentially about Doctor Who and um, Matthew, you have a very special uh, history with the character of Doctor Who. For those that don't know, tell people who you are and, and how Doctor Who uh, played a role in your life. I wrote the um, Eighth Doctor um, in 96 when he came out as a TV movie. And my dad was also in the show in 1966 playing Doc Holliday. Um, and there's a strange sort of the, uh, the movie explores those sort of connections and those echoes that happen in our life, not just from my point of view, but from every fan's point of view. As fans find things to identify with, um, they find out things about themselves. So that's why the movie's called Doctor Who Am I? Um, that search for identity that we all have. Uh, this was the eighth Doctor, Paul McGann, uh, 1996 Fox TV movie. Uh, was supposed to uh, launch into a, a, a series, and un un due to unfortunate circumstances, uh, it never made it. Uh, Vanessa, what was the seed of this documentary, and what were you hoping to explore? To, what's kind of the story of the documentary? Well, I didn't actually know that Matthew wrote The Eighth Doctor, so that was quite surprising when I did find that out. I, you know, we worked together on many things, and um, so when I found that out, I was like, this is amazing. He was getting invited to conventions, and the controversy of the TV movie seemed hilarious to me. Um, and so it was, it was within two months of having a quick conversation, we were already filming, and we didn't know what we were going to get. I thought... You know, it was going to be people cornering Matthew and being really angry and whatnot, but we got a completely different experience. So, Matthew, you're going to these conventions uh, for the first time. Uh, you're meeting the fans there. Uh, you're going into some fans' homes uh, that are Doctor, Doctor Who fans. What was uh, that experience for you? What did you learn from them? And, uh, and subsequently, what did you learn about yourself through the process? Well, that's a very good, rich question, which is <laughs> complex and hard to answer and, and takes me back to days at university. Um, uh, I, I, I'll be honest, I'm still learning. We're still going to conventions and we're still, you know, doing screenings in places. And every time we screen the movie, I learn something slightly different, not just about how the movie plays, but I learn something different about the nature of, of, of fandom and also the nature, you know, lots of things. So I'm constantly learning. 
um, with with meeting the Doctor Who fans. That at first I was a little scared um, uh, because I didn't really know them. And then as I got to know them, I realised what a family they were, which is a bit of a cliche, I know, but it's true. There's a there's that feeling, especially with Doctor Who, because Doctor Who spans so many ages. You know, there are people people in their 80s who were 20 when they first saw it. They're, they're still fans, you know, and then people who are just becoming fans and about to become fans when Disney Plus take it in November of this year, Disney Plus are starting to, you know, really push it on a worldwide basis. So it'll just be Disney Plus and the BBC and, and it'll be much more accessible as it moves forward into the 61st year with Shuti Gatwa. It's going to be exciting. So then as a year the co-director of the documentary, you're also Matthew's friend. What was this experience like for you as a film director and as his friend to watch him uh, go to these conventions and interact with fans and, and maybe you have interactions with the fans as well? Was, I, it, a, was it a, like an alien world to you? No, I mean, I'm, I'm, I, I love uh, pop culture, science fiction, anything nerdy. You know, I have gone to an X-Files uh, convention in my day. So I thought it was absolutely wonderful and fascinating. Um, this whole process it really has been um, meeting the Doctor Who fandom as like they are family in a community. It's this world that, you know, I didn't know about, but then now we're kind of in it. And it's just wonderful to see this, you know, go to these conventions and see the same people over and over. Um, but as like this process of making this documentary, it's my first feature film. I was the editor, co-producer. <laughs> partner in crime and so I've just learned a lot about filmmaking and what it takes to get an indie movie out there and it's like need your film family as yeah. Matthew likes to call it and so it's really been a journey for friends it's just friends going out and making a movie and we're just so happy that the reception has been so positive and like Chris Chibnall um, <coughs> the, the showrunner during uh, Jody Whitaker's years has said some wonderful things called it a beautiful, rich and beguiling. Uh, he gave us a wonderful quote, so gotta let you know that Chris Chibnall said it, gave it thumbs up. Um, yeah, so we've just been over the moon with the response that people have been giving. So Matthew, you've had a, a long history as an actor, uh, a writer, not only the Doctor Who TV movie, but uh, the story <laughs> of the Emperor's New Groove from Disney. Uh, you've written many episodes of the Young Indiana Jones Chronicles. Uh, the eighth doctor, Paul McGann, his story, uh, he did the pilot, it didn't get picked up. Uh, subsequently, his story continued in uh, audio dramas and uh, comic books, novels. Have you ever considered uh, or have you ever been approached uh, continuing, uh, since you're a writer, taking your concept from that 96 TV movie and expanding it, uh, telling the stories that you would have told had this series uh, made it to uh, season one? Um, some people at Big Finish at Gallifrey did say, well, would you like to write another episode? Would you like to l write something for us? And I was saying, well, I think I could probably do something from when he just shuts the door at the end of the TV movie. Anything after that, which Paul did for Big Finish, he really made the Doctor his own. And I would have to do a lot of homework to get that as good as the writer's who have been who have been supplying him with his adventures through the past 30 odd years you know of 28 27 years or whatever it is. Oh, but you could do it but i could do it i could i could do it i mean i could do it and i would throw that out into the universe so <laughs> he, he, he can do it yeah. um but you know i've done a lot of other stuff since and, and i really enjoy making um the little films that we make we've you know it's a good, we've got a little filmmaking community and we just make our films really so uh, what is the ultimate, I'll, I'll throw this last question out to the both of you, what is the ultimate takeaway that you hope audiences uh, get from your film? Um, I guess it's, you know, family and acceptance. Um, what is the final takeaway? Yes, family, acceptance. My, the line that always moves me is sort of like not having to ask for permission to make films. I'm not giving away anything, but there's this element of also just accept or owning your own creativity and just going out there and just doing it, which is sort of sums up what this film is has been for us as a journey of just, all right, nothing's going to stop us, hell or high water, we're going to finish and just get it out there.
Yeah, and I feel as though I agree with all of that. Um, and but also for me, I think there's um, the film examines the nature of regeneration um, because it's about a doctor's regeneration, trying to work out who he is. It's about fans; they regenerate when they become fans. It's about my regeneration in the story. Vanessa, you know, is regeneration as well. I think there's, a, there's a, all of that is going on, and we look. Um, at the way in which people can reinvent themselves in America on a very on a very practical day-to-day -day basis, people move and constantly reinvent themselves in America, and they're freer to do that than they are maybe in the UK, which is very much bound by cl the class system. Um, so I think that's one of the I think that's one of the re one of the reasons why Doctor Who has found such a good strong devoted following in America that's kept the show alive for 60 years and hopefully our documentary stands testament to that. It's a remarkable documentary. It's called Doctor Who Am I and uh, everybody out there can watch it on March 28th. It'll be on all the uh, video on demand platforms, Blu-ray, DVD. Uh, search it out. It's a wonderful documentary. Uh, Vanessa and Matthew, thank you so much for chatting with us Thanks today so on Sherry the Gate TV. Thank you. Bye -bye. Thank you.